All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about everything you need to know about the Cold Steel SRK. Now, the search and rescue knife, or as they now call it, the survival rescue knife, is a knife that has been around for a very long time, has a rich history, and this is one that I'm genuinely excited to go over and discuss in full detail so without any further ado guys please don't forget to comment like share subscribe check out the patreon the instagram the support means a ton and most importantly hit the notifications if you want to see more awesome videos like this one okay so i'm going to pull up my notes here so that i don't miss anything this knife is a pretty awesome knife that has a lot of history so let's jump right into it Okay, so to start off with the Cold Steel SRK, this blade was introduced in the year 1990. That was the first year this was available to order in catalogs for those who remember ordering knives in catalogs. Sadly, I can't say so myself, but this is the knife that Cold Steel really cement or really cemented Cold Steel's place in history as far as being a quality knife manufacturer that made durable, functional well-made knives that also could be pushed in or like could be pushed into survival outdoor and tactical uh, applications of course the search and rescue knife or srk has seen a wide variety of variants throughout the years with coated and uncoated versions of carbon v which is very similar to 1095 all the way up to high quality super steels like cpm 3v um, in addition to that it's also seen variances aus 8a and uh, it's also seen a number of grind variants too nowadays it is usually a hollow grind but in previous generations it was a flat grind and regardless to which one you like uh, both are very re well respected and very well loved in the outdoor community in addition to this too the i think the biggest thing that probably has very much helped with the track record of the srk is um, while I'm not entirely clear when it became the standard issue knife, it is the standard issue knife for Navy SEALs that are going through the BUDS or basic underwater demo training um, for, like I said, Navy SEALs. So this is their basic um, standard issue blade. So if that goes without, um, so that kind of helps add to the credence of this being a very durable, very solid blade. And I mean, if the Navy SEALs trust this blade in, you know, being a standard issue knife, uh, definitely it goes without saying that this is a pretty awesome blade. Now, if that wasn't enough of a history or an astonishment for the fact of adding to the amazingness of the Cold Steel SRK, I think one of the other things that is really impressive about the Cold Steel SRK is the amount of clones that, has, uh, ha that have spawned from this blade. And I mean this both internal and external. So we now see the Cold Steel SRKC, which is kind of a you know, compact version of the SRK. So that's kind of an internal clone that Cold Steel made uh, here pretty recently. But in addition to that, too, we also see a number of clones from other companies such as Falk Neven as they released their... Um, primary S1 and A1, and the A1 being a very, very close knife to this, uh, to the SRK in 1995. So just five short years later, uh, they released the A1, which was very similar to the SRK. Um, and also here in more recent years, uh, we've also seen Survival Lily's APO1S, I believe it is, the APO1S, um, which was a direct uh, derivative. It's not necessarily a clone, similar to how the Falknevens aren't direct clones to the SRK, but they essentially are spiritual successors and, you know, kind of take that uh, general basis or grounds of the SRK and modify it and change it to make it uh, better suited for the intended use of the maker. So, um, you know, regardless to what you may think of the APO1S or the Falkneven A1, um, they draw a lot of inspiration from the SRK. And I think that that is a strong testament to the ability and the strengths of this knife. This knife was very well designed and very well thought out. And it's such a simple blade, but it manages to combine survival, bushcraft, and tactical roles all within it. This is really one of the most ultimate multi-role blades out there. And the fact that it can function so well 
cold, warm, wet, dry environments so well really means that that is why this blade is so well loved. And once again, kind of circling back to the buds training of basic underwater demolition they are using this blade regularly underwater now granted buds is likely using the stainless versions like the san mai versions of this blade for underwater use and not the sk5 but the fact of the matter is the really grippy rubber handle means that this is a blade you can get traction if you need to cut stab pierce uh, materials underwater. This is a blade that you can get good traction. Not to mention, too, the fact that this is a fully rubberized handle means that you are not going to have any temperature issues or handle scales that crack, break, fracture, melt, or anything like that while they're on the blade. So that is definitely a really big plus to the overall design. So that is essentially the basic history to the SRK. Now, what, who is this knife for and why add it to your collection? That's the big question when it comes to buying a knife. First off, I would say that this knife is for pretty much everyone. It is a really reasonably priced blade, especially the SK5 version still coming in under $100. This blade is really reasonably priced. That once again, as we just talked about, is super well suited to a wide plethora of different environments and use cases. But in addition to that too, this is also a blade that you might want to get if you are interested in the historical context. In fact, so much so that you might end up wanting to get more of the collectible versions such as the CPM3V version or the discontinued uh, Carbon V versions of this blade. And so if you're more interested in collecting it, I would say look at those and do some more research into collecting them. This video, I'm just going to break down the history, so won't get into like collecting these guys. But if you are more of a just pure user definitely go with the sk5 uh, high carbon version of this blade it is super fantastic once again super budget oriented and it is just a great blade overall that is well suited to a wide plethora of tasks once again this is really what i would consider the ultimate affordable or budget survival knife. In addition to that too, it's also probably the ultimate budget uh, multi-roll blade. So this blade's been fielded by many people across many continents, as you guys can probably tell. And once again, very well trusted by you know military branches uh, here in the US. And once again, it's been cloned by a wide plethora of different people in different countries, like I said, most notably Falkneven, who released their A1, which is very much inspired by this blade just a few short years after it was released. So that is the history and why I think the SRK is probably one of the most awesome blades out there. And I feel like a lot of people don't dig into the rich history of this knife, but it really does have quite an excellent history. It's really worth talking about in my opinion, especially when you got Navy SEALs using it to train. You know, you have awesome companies out there looking to duplicate it. And the blade's honestly been around for now over 30 years. Years. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.